So welcome. I'm Kate Lee. I'm the Executive Director of Education and Workforce for the South Bend Regional Chamber. Thanks for being here and being a part of Manufacturing Days 2021 and attending this session. All attendees are muted, but we still want to hear from you. So please use the chat function to ask any questions or share comments. Educators, please drop your school class name and number of students in the chat so we know who's here and how many. This session is scheduled for 30 minutes and we'll be sharing your questions with our speakers. So um, just make sure you drop those questions in earlier rather than later so we don't have five questions in two minutes at the end, because sometimes that does happen. All the good stuff comes at the end. So we wanna thank our sponsors for Manufacturing Days 2021. You can find the full list on the Manufacturing Days landing page, which we hope you've already visited or will soon. This session is sponsored by Lions Industries, and that's also where our speakers are from. They and our other sponsors recognize the important role manufacturing plays in our region and want to help our community learn about these businesses and the great career opportunities they offer. Aaron Venno, Sector Relations Manager and Apprenticeship Success Coordinator from Michigan Works, will be moderating this session. So take it away, Aaron. Thanks, Kate. My name is Aaron Venno. As Kate said, I'm from Michigan Works, and I'm happy to be here moderating this session. Today as our speaker, we have Cody Hetler, previously a student at Van Buren Tech, who I just saw in the chat. We have a class from Van Buren Tech, so hoorah there. Van Buren Tech is now a robot programmer for Lions Industries. Sitting with him is Kasha, and Kasha is an HR manager out at Lions Industries as well. So we're going to go ahead and take it away. So very first, right off the bat, Cody, tell us a little bit about Lions Industries. What do you make there? So Alliance Industries is a bathtub manufacturing facility, and we make uh, bathtubs, uh, shower bases, and wall surroundings for those. Uh, we used to make sinks, but not anymore, and that's sort of what we make around here. And so especially when we have these students on the call that are in a class that you took at Van Buren Tech, I just saw this in the chat. How did you choose your career, or better yet, how did your career choose you? <laughs> that was my answer. How did my career cho chose me? Well, it was all a series of, of, of fortunate events. Uh, I was supposed to go in one technical center class. There was a mix of cooling and software engineering. I was in there and then I got into robotics, uh, the robotics club there. Um, and I really loved that side of that. And then uh, as I got closer towards the end of high school, uh, there was a job opening for this, uh, for Lions Industries for programming their industrial paint robots. And I took that and uh, they took me, sent me to some classes, and here I am. So, so it's just a series of uh, fortunate events that I've just kept along with. I stuck to the same thing for the past uh, several years, um, and that's, that's that's how I got to this uh, road. That's pretty incredible. I know you mentioned here just briefly, but can you dive in a little bit deeper on your career pathway? What education training did you do? What classes did you pursue? Obviously, you're a student at Van Buren Tech, but you also mentioned some additional classes. What were those? So uh, those additional classes were um, geared towards the robots that we have here at Lions Industries. There was a, a, a task that I needed to do, and that was to program these industrial paint robots. So they sent me to uh, um, a facility in Rochester Hills, Detroit called Fanic America. That's the brand uh, mm -hmm. of our robots that we have here. And uh, there were four classes, uh, a maintenance teardown of the robot, an electrical maintenance teardown of the controller, a uh, programming class, an advanced programming class, uh, all these uh, specialties uh, or the pillars to uh, the things that I do here. Uh, in combination with the things I learned at Van Buren Technology Center and the software engineering and the team building and the first robotics they had, it's just a, a perfect storm for what I, I'm doing here. And it, it's pretty cool that I get to use the things at Van Buren Technology Center and, and the, the things that they have sent me to in Detroit. Um, so, yeah. It's really fun. I can see the passion and hear the passion in your voice. Um, it's, it's exciting to hear. So I know you're going to have a good an answer for this. Why is what you do a great career choice for students to consider? Um, it keeps me thinking. Um, I, I'm, I'm constantly having to problem solve and think outside the box and weigh pros and cons um, to this technical field that I'm in. Uh, it's, you're not just going to sit down and do the same repetitive tasks every single day. That's what uh, that's the byproduct of all of that that work um, being focused and geared towards a specific field and specializing in something like that. Uh, I've got to at least do something different sort of every single day and use my brain to do it. And it keeps me on my toes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to hopefully this thing gets stronger as I get older and my body gets a little bit weaker, but that's a good trade-off. <laughs> I agree. So I know you just said that everything changes, but what does a typical day look like? 
Uh, a typical day. I mean, <clears throat> so I, clock, I I get up at, at, at four in the morning and I get here at around 6 a.m. And that's when we start production. And uh, the first things that I do is I need to go out to the robots. And uh, these are paint robots. And we spray a vacuum form shell uh, with fiberglass uh, and, and some other materials. that we can talk about that a little bit. And I worked with we're going to give. Um, I check material output. I make sure the robot's maintaining a, a good amount of uh, fiberglass and uh, resin. And if not, the robot can be calibrated to do so. And, and then I meet every Wednesday uh, and I go over projects. Currently, I, I am programming uh, a, 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 a product that can spray three bases. And that's sort of what I'm working on now. That's a project that I have. I have other projects for uh, maintenance programs for the robots that we're trying to enter. Um, we got a fifth robot for programming, getting that thing up and running. So I got a whole priorities list and I have three of them that I focus on. So after that material, checking the material output, then I focus on my projects uh, and I try to make at least some progress on them every single day. That's pretty incredible. So, I mean, and that outlines a lot of what your job responsibilities are too, is, is not only do you have some of your daily tasks, but you're really working on some different things each and every day to, to move projects forward. Did you have an kind of an aha moment in high school or even younger when you said, this is what I want to do with my life? Um, an aha moment, like Eureka, this is it. <laughs> this is what I want to do. Um, yeah, yes. I'm still waiting for that. So let, tell me what this feels like. <laughs> um, so there's this, this uh, moment, I guess, that we all wait for. Um, you have this thought in your head, um, the thought in your head that you, you're going to reach somewhere in the future that at one point you're going to go, oh, it's here. I'm here. I'm in that spot that I thought of so many years ago. And you go, okay, now what? Hey, you don't just stop there. You have to keep going. Stop asking yourself or how much longer until I get to a point, but then how, for, how much further can you go? Um, I don't think I've reached that aha moment, but I'm sort of dancing with it. And I'm just seeing how far I can go. Um, this whole thing is the aha moment. <laughs> I love that answer. I, that is incredible. And, and why is beyond your years? So along that same kind of note, what opportunities do you see to grow in this career as a robot programmer? <clears throat> so I first started off, they had this, this mind said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to join this company to be this programmer. But first I had to, uh, it just wasn't like day one. I started doing this. I had to go out and work on the, the plant floor. And I did that for several months. And then I, I finally got to do a little bit of programming and then I'd go out there some more. And then it slowly built on top of that. Um, and I, I've learned so much. They sent me to two different classes and um, this company is, it's, uh, it's really it's grown, it's grown so much in the past almost four years that I've been here. And then before that, if you ask anybody who's left to come back, um, we are, we're going to get, we're getting more robots. Possibly we, we can be able to program those. Um, uh, yeah, the, just the company is growing every single year and I'm excited to grow with it as well. And the, the opportunities that the company will grow with, hopefully I can grow with them as, as well, but uh, with incorporating new automation. So in different forms. I can attest to that. It is it is a radically different company that than it was a handful of years ago. Not only when we talk about programming, um, but just really taking it from zero to one hundred. They've done a great job. Do you have any recommendations for students pursuing a career in this field, considering a job in this field? Um, recommendations on like what exactly? What classes to take? Um, are there any kind of extracurricular activities that are that are wise to pursue? Um, different avenues, uh, skills to consider for my specific career path. Yeah, as a robot programmer. Um, geometry is if you want to program industrial. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> no, geometry is really uh, was one of the most things in terms of math that uh, you use. Uh, and Cartesian coordinate planes and uh, manipulating uh, triangles and, and positional data. That's know that. Yes. That'd be the <laughs> no first geometry in terms of like the schoolwork. Uh, and, and then after that, um, I mean, I, I was, I was in robotics. I just surrounded myself in that learning the diff about different motor controllers and uh, how to manipulate certain switches and IOs. Um, 
So um, first robotics is a good thing to get into. Um, if people are from Van Buren Tech, you are already on the right path. <laughs> um, what else? I haven't gone to college. I have avoided that, I would say successfully. <laughs> um, I'm not in debt. They've sent me to all the schooling. They paid all of it. Um, so just yeah, math is a good one. Uh, your technical education, uh, try to focus in on one thing and stick with it. Um, when you're jumping all around the spots is sort of where you have a hard time, which I get it. We're, we're young. We're trying to find who we are. <clears throat> um, but uh, if you can stick to one path, um, that'd be, that'd be good. That'd be a good advice. Talk to me about the importance of coming to work every day, showing up on time, having good teamwork and collaboration skills. So, uh, I would consider those those soft skills, mm -hmm. those are very important. Yeah, if you can show up to work, they love you. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the hardest things, actually. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, yeah, that is very important. If you can just do those things that she said, showing up to work, uh, coming in on time, being consistent with that, um, uh, rinse and repeat, uh, stick to the beat, uh, and you will succeed and see your feats. Um, <laughs> yes, those are very important. I have not heard that before. I like it. Clever. You know, right now. <laughs> and Cody, before we switch to our tour here, talk to me. What is the best thing about your job? The best thing about my job is uh, I get to I problem solve and think every single day. I got different problems that I need to overcome. Some of my like answers to these problems, for some reason, I wait for it. It's like I'll be driving to work. It'll be in the morning and it just poof, oh, there's the there's a solution. So I'm like, I'm right, thinking about it all day. And then in the morning is when I get, when it gets to me, it's not just wait in the morning. <clears throat> but yeah, that's one of the greatest things is that I get to use my brain every single day. I get to think, I get to problem solve. And uh, I, I'm really excited for this, this company and to see it grow. That's another thing about, about the job. Yes. yes I, can, I can feel it in your words. I love it. Um, and I know that you are going to take us on a tour of Lions Industries. Yes. All right. Well, here we are. Let's turn it over to you. I'm going to give you um, that control to show us what Lions looks like. Okay. Um, let me see here. Go ahead and figure that out. Ah. All right. Can you, can see, you this? see that? I sure can. This is the front entrance of the factory for people. We have other entrances for materials. So uh, the purpose of uh, a factory is to convert raw materials into a product that you can then sell. And some of our raw materials that we turn into a bathtub is polyester resin, titanium dioxide, calcium carbonate, organic peroxide, fiberglass, acrylic cap ABS. All those things are a bathtub or a shower wall. And uh, we're gonna show you these as we, we go along the, the tour. So let me, this is the front entrance. Let me take you over to ground zero. We're making, uh, we're gonna vacuum form a, uh, a shell. So this is, uh, the people are going on break right now, so you probably won't get to see them uh, doing uh, the, the process, but this is a vacuum former, as you can see on the right-hand side, and th there are sheets, uh, there are flat sheets, and that's the uh, acrylic cap ABS. So uh, uh, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, that's uh, an abbreviation or a, a, yeah, an abbreviation of the material. The acrylic on that sheet is uh, for a weathering protection. And then the bulk of the material is the ABS. Uh, we can't have a whole thing made out of acrylic because it would be very brittle. <clears throat> they place it on uh, this, this gantry system right here and has clamps and it clamps the plant, the sheet onto the gantry securely and it goes into an oven at uh, very high temperatures and they wait until they see uh, the, the sheet sag and they pull the gantry out and there's a mold right here uh, that then the mold goes up into the plastic and then on these big tanks, they open a valve which sucks or which opens uh, it to the vacuum and it sucks the sheet onto the mold. Um, and that's how uh, the shower wall is formed that you see that they're making right here. Let me try to go to a different vac, vacuum former. Another shower walls, I think this is, yeah, this is a different one. Um, this is the same thing with what I said um, previously. Oh, here are where we make bathtubs. These are the bathtubs you see. It's the same process, it's just the mold is different. Uh, we get the molds from a third party. 
company that makes them. So after uh, that, our shells uh, are, are vacuum formed, then they go over to uh, WIP, which is a work in progress. This is where they store all of the material so that it can be loaded onto these carts that you see. Uh, these carts right here are what they place the, uh, the, the product on, and there could be multiple carts for the same product so we can get a good throughput to uh, maintain orders. Uh, they place the, the, the shower walls on here, and you can see on, on the right side of the track is where they put bases and, and uh, uh, tubs, and they cut off the excess plastic right here, and that's called flashing. So the excess plastic from the vacuum forming process uh, is trimmed off. Um, so after our, our start, we vacuum formed it, we put it in the whip, and then it goes onto these uh, carts to then be towed over to the booth where we have our robots. Um, so these processes, these first two that you've shown us, those are not, not um, I don't want to say roboticized at this point, but are those, uh, I guess, handmade? <laughs> Yeah, they are handmade by a manufacturer called, I don't remember the name of the manufacturer, but they are, they are robots. Robots come in all shapes and sizes. Your toaster's a robot. Uh, your, your, uh, we have robots that spray the materials out. Those are robots. They, they just, they look a little bit different. So I guess uh, it is automated Sorry. in a way. <laughs> um, so uh, we have the vacuum formers. Uh, they have certain switches and, and there's PLCs, programmable logic controllers on them. So when the gantry goes in, then it sends a signal to the computer saying, oh, I'm in here. And then it's the operator waits a certain amount of time and they flip a switch and then the robot, the, the PLC or the vacuum form or the robot goes, oh, I, I, you hit this button. I'm going to go ahead and the gantry is going to come out. So uh, Great that's point. Our, Great our point. Response. They do come in all sizes, don't they? <laughs> they do. <laughs> did, I, did I answer your questions? You did. Um, so this is... As, I don't know, let me, I can find a better camera. So this is the other line. This is the end of the line from what you saw from the previous one. And uh, you can see here are some shower bases. These are some walls. And for certain products, they need wood support um, placed on them, which is what you see here. We make uh, all of our wood in-house, some we buy custom. And these get loaded onto those carts that you see over here. Uh, because after the robot sprays it with the material, then uh, then then workers uh, placed on these wood supports. Um, so this is our booth. Actually, I can I can show you. Oh yeah. Them spray. Good idea. Perfect. Okay, so ooh, see how the, the carts are being fed in? No one's touching it. That's one of our recent uh, investments in terms of automation to our, our booth here. Before, the workers would have to grab them and bring them inside uh, manually, which would be, it would hurt people because <clears throat> they, they would long hours of pulling these really heavy carts every single day mm -hmm. would take a toll. So uh, this is actually made by Edgewater Automations uh, in um, um, St. Joseph. St. Joseph. That's the integrators or the, the automation place that put those in. Um, they're pretty cool. Had to do what we, I think we installed it over a weekend. It was a Saturday. It was a Saturday and a Sunday. A Saturday was 14 hours and it was a long day. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Um, so the cart has been uh, put in front of the robot, and this is its fixture location because that robot has a, a repeatability of 0 0.3 millimeters, and it's going to go to that same spot within 0 0.3 millimeters. So the cart needs to be in the same spot as well. So that, that's what you're seeing here. These uh, guidelines, these are our fixtures, and this track is going to try its best to stop in the same spot every single time using a servo motor and encoders that are on there. After it is in location, then there's an operator right there. He's going to hit a button. And the robot uh, knows what to spray because uh, the person who loaded it in the beginning scanned it. And now the robot has the proper process. So there are so far for, like I said, in the beginning, uh, the, the, re the purpose of a factory is to convert raw materials into a product you can then sell. So our raw materials are dealing with the acrylic, uh, ABS, and then now we are looking at uh, fiberglass, 
um, polyesterase and titanium dioxide, carbon, uh, calcium carbonate, and then uh, uh, it's a catalyst that mixes in with our liquid um, that this stuff hardens after about three minutes. And the, the, it's an exothermic reaction and it gives off styrene, which is the same thing that happens for when you 3D print ABS inside of a 3D printer for you polymer techs. Oh, nice. Same thing comes off of these as styrene. So uh, when our robot sprays a tub like it is here, it goes through uh, our dynamic it is uh, it's two things. It sprays it with fiberglass and the resin that's in the resin. And then it goes back through with just like a wet coat and smooths everything down and lays it down. So there's a- So you can see a slightly different color looks like is going on now, which I'm assuming is that final coat? Just this kind is of the first coat. It we have not coat. gotten it the second coat yet, but they're both the same colors. It's like a beige. Uh, the robot you see is called a P250IB. Um, for a FANUC robot, there can be multiple names. Uh, that's a P250IB. You can have an M that the name starts with, an S for material handler or spot welder. Um, this is a P for paint. It's a paint robot. And the difference between paint robots and any other robots is that they're encased. They have a purge system. There's an exhaust and there's air flowing and it's maintaining a positive air pressure making sure uh, the air is flowing out the robot uh, and, and no fumes build up so there's no boom boom. And then uh, <laughs> our fiberglass manufacturing will go away. Which <laughs> does help with safety. No yeah. boom booms. Yes. Uh, it's made in Rochester's Hills, Detroit uh, versus uh, other FANUC robots, which are the yellow ones that you see those made in Japan. All the paint robots, these P250IBs are made in uh, America. American made, American made robot for American made tubs. Uh, I love it. Yes, this is our, our second coat. It's just a uh, resin. There's no fiberglass. It's a white out. Um, this robot. Much thicker coat. Yep. And this robot goes about 1500 millimeters a second. I don't know what that is in miles per hour. Sadly. Um, <laughs> it, it can reach about nine feet. Uh, it has a maximum payload of 35 pounds on the end right here. And uh, the gun you see on there is made in house. So now we're going to move on to uh, after the booth, after it's gotten sprayed. So after the products have made its way through the uh, glass booth, it's been sprayed. Uh, people have placed wood supports in the middle, uh, it's cured up, and then it gets sprayed again with a second coat right here at our other robot. And then people placed uh, mold injected, they're like, we call them feet, but they're supports for the bottom of the tub that go on there. And oh, the, yeah. Yep, this is, so when you install it, it it's supported uh, symmetrically along the whole base of the tub. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm zoomed in so much. See, I don't know the name, it's the kind of plastic that's made up. I, I think it's, ju it's just, I don't remember actually. It's just Sorry. an acrylic, I think. Yeah, they, they come in multiple different sizes. And they're molded. Oh, yeah. I have a feeling that when you're done with this, you're going to go out and look, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. I want to find out. <laughs> so for next time. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's the, the end here. After this, I wonder if I can find it. Heat tunnel, heat tunnel, heat tunnel. I don't know if I can get a good uh, angle, but after it goes after our robots and the feet, then it goes into a heat tunnel, uh, and then it fur further cures. Oh, I guess you can't. No, nope, not at all. And it goes down this line, and and uh, the workers are encouraged not to push them, so they're given enough time to uh, to cure all the way. Um, after it gets down and, and is down at the the end of the line here. Workers then take the product off of the cart and then put them into saws to be trimmed. We're almost towards the end uh, of the, the bathtub's life cycle. That right there is the president of the company. Yeah. Um, he's always out on the floor more than he is in the office, checking on everything, making sure it's flowing good. Yes, he is a very hands-on owner. These are our wall saws. They trim our wall surroundings for the showers. Um, you see there's four of them. That is two lines and the, pro the, saw the wall goes onto the gantry and then it, it goes through one saw and it cuts one side. 
then an operator takes it, operator takes it, flips it around, places it on the other saw, and then it goes through and it cuts it on uh, the remaining uh, flashing that is left. And then from there, it is then uh, inspected and then placed into a box and then out to shipping and then hopefully into someone's house. So where, which stores are we going to find Lions Industry Tubs at? Um, Menards is one of them, one of them that you will probably know the best. Um, yeah, Menards is our biggest um, vendor. And then we do a lot of private label uh, items for the mobile home stores, which are more like uh, Blevins, Mobile Home Depot, um, things like that, that you may see more in the like Florida area. Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, but Menards is our biggest vendor here. We used to have Lowe's as well, uh, but we can't keep up. <laughs> so we had to just uh, let Lowe's go and now we're just a Menards vendor. I was going to say, I know, I know the answer to this question, but uh, COVID, did it boost or decline the need for bathtubs? Uh, for us, it, it made our industry absolutely booming. Um, so obviously, we definitely don't need any more sales. We need people. <laughs> and hiring right now is what's become so tough. So we just can't keep up with the sales that we keep getting. Uh, we're probably one of the most competitive bathtub vendors in the U.S. right now. There you have it. So I do have a question on this just come in. Cody, before you had the paint robots, did Lions hand spray every tub? Yes, in the dark ages they did. Uh, <laughs> in the dark ages. In, in some cases, uh, they was actually they were actually faster uh, when they did this. This was about uh, it was 2015 when they installed their first robot, and it took about five years after that to automate everything um, because of the process of that and people changing their mind uh, uh, handicapped that um, progression. <clears throat> um, there would be people in these full jump suits, so this, this PPE, and they would have these big old hot tubes over their uh, shoulders, and they'd have the gun, the same gun that is on the robots that you saw, and then they would spray them, and the cart would be on a swivel, and they'd kick it, and they'd move it, um, and doing that for 10 hours a day, I mean, they're going to be covered in PPE in that hot environment if it's 10 degrees out, if it's 97 degrees out, so... Uh, Yes, we used a hand spray and the robots have, uh, have saved us from that. It sounds like a safety nightmare too. Yeah, yes. yeah it definitely was. Um, if we probably did not switch over to robotics when we did um, and to start implementing all this automation, we would probably not be here today. Oh, that's really good to know. Cody, do you have any final parting words of wisdom to share with the students on, or teachers on the call? So during your whole school career, afterwards it's college, okay? It's, it's you gotta figure this out. Maybe take some time to think about what you wanna do because of the world is, is a little bit different after you leave high school. And um, you're, st you're still young, uh, we're all still young, I think. <clears throat> and we're trying to figure things out. Um, that's what I would do um, and find something that you're happy with. Yeah, something that you're gonna be doing for the rest of your life because I'm sorry to say this, but working is, is what we got to do. So make sure that you love it. And if you uh, do what you love, you'll never work another day in your life. Yeah. Cody Hetler from Lions Industries in Dowagic, Michigan. Kasha, Cody, thank you so much for joining us. For those on the call, do not forget to check out the landing page for the Manufacturing Days 2021. This session has been recorded and will be available along with the other sessions that have already been recorded. There are tons of resources and information available. And if anybody is interested in learning more about Lions Industries, please let uh, Alice and Kate or I know at the chamber and we would be happy to pass along more information and connections. And I will turn it over to Kate. Thank you so much. I, I Can I ask Kasha a question too? Can I ask you, like, how did you end up in manufacturing human resources, what you do? Well, it was kind of like Cody just kind of fell into it. I actually started off as the receptionist here at Lions uh, 10 years ago. And about a year and a half into that, they said, you know, we think you'd be good at customer service. So I did that for the next few years. And then three years ago, Lance came to me and said, 
you know, do you want to be our HR manager? You seem really good with people. And I said, heck yeah. <laughs> so I get to work with like Cody and everybody. Um, we just have a very family oriented business here. But the thing that really gets you going every day, is like who you work with. That is so important. You don't want to wake up dreading where you go. Um, and when you have good people behind you, it really helps out. That is wonderful. And, and we're getting ready to redo a bathroom and now I'm all excited because now I can make the request that I want my shower base to be made at Lions. Yeah, absolutely. And you're more than welcome exactly. to visit and tour our facility whenever you want. So I'll be like, I'm just going to go pick it up myself. I'm going to go hang out with the people. I'm telling you their break room is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you need to know? here uh especially burritos so burritos and tacos that's our thing around here <laughs> very nice well thank you so much thanks to Aaron and to Cody and to Kasha for being here thanks to the students and educators for attending and I want to remind the students too as you were saying you need people right now so some a lot of these students are still in high school if there are adults in your life who are trying to figure out their next step or what they want to do for like as Cody made clear we're all we're all still exploring all the time no matter what our age so there are great opportunities at a great company. So make sure that you spread the word on the available opportunities at Lions Industries. And thanks again so much and have a great day. You too. Thank you for so much.